Good evening and welcome to this LinkedIn live session on the topic of innovation, the lifeblood for growth 2.0. This LinkedIn live series brought to you by Dynamic CIO is part of our yearly conversation on the theme Mission 2025, Progressive Thoughts, Practical Innovations. I am Ashwini Mishra, Executive Editor at Dynamic CIO and with me are some of the best technology leaders in the industry. Join me to welcome S. Vaidyanath, fondly called as Vaidhi, and is the Global Head of Technology at Unilever. Amol Deshpande, Head of Digital at Mahindra Rice, and Manoj Srivastava, the Chief Technology Officer at Ease My Trip. Welcome Vaidhi, Manoj and Amol. Thank you for taking out time and being part of this session. Thank you, Ashwini. But look forward to a great interaction and have your valuable insights. You know, uh, while I was going through the topic, I, I was reminded of a statement from uh, the late John F. Kennedy, where he stated that the word crisis in Chinese is composed of two characters, one representing danger and the other representing an opportunity. While he may not have been entirely correct on the linguistics piece, but the sentiment was definitely right. You know, a crisis does present an opportunity. There is a choice that we have, and it is so true today. Business is changing. Disruptions are coming faster than expected. As we open up doors to a new normal life, most of the consultant organizations and futurists, each one of us are, try are trying to picture of what the future will look like. And everyone agrees on two things. First, that the world will look different than it was before. And second is that the transformation will not be temporary. From an enterprise scenario, business technology leaders like yourselves will require to get up to speed and deepen your understanding in these changing times to innovate for future growth. But before we get on to discuss and find the unique opportunities that businesses are looking to tap through innovation, let's first have an opening round of views from each one of you to get a sense around what do you find more exciting in these changing times? We have seen that technology is ubiquitous, skills are necessary, culture is important. Are you looking to stay with the tried and tested ideas or is it time to bring in new disruptive ideas and do something entirely different? Let's hear it from you, Vedi, first. Super, okay. Uh, thanks, Ashwini. Uh, yes, uh, you know, like you said, uh, skills and culture uh, is not just about important, but it's become a need and not... Um, you know, building skills uh, culture, uh, and culture, uh, you know, in, in a tech industry, we're looking at tech as, in, uh, you know, secondary. We don't want to do that. The way I look at it is every business looks at itself as a tech business now, right? So it's beyond just skill and culture. It's how a business starts looking at itself, uh, you know, from a technology innovation perspective. How does it keep technology as a core business, uh, you know, core part of its business is what is challenging, right? Um, you know, considering I'm from the core technology, uh, you know, uh, background, every discussion about strategy and a solution to a business problem now revolves around technology. And that, you know, doubly excites me and also gives me, you know, uh, a more challenging, you know, look out for, you know, what is next coming up in the business though. So that's the way I look at it. And, uh, you know, that's, it's, it's become a, a non-negotiable and technology is nothing but part of the business going forward. Absolutely. So initial points, well, well taken, Vedi. You know, so every business is a tech business, and that's that's true across industries. Uh, uh, Amul, how are you responding? Are you looking at areas beyond the obvious? Yeah. So uh, what uh, Vaidhi mentioned, I would like to just articulate uh, it a little extension way. You know, you talked about pandemic, and you talked about some of the impacts. Uh, See, I would use two words, you know, role of technology in our lives, whether it is business or individual life, it has become Sarva Darshi, Sarva Sparshi. As it say that it's visible everywhere and it is touching practically everything, right? Uh, probably if uh, you see these words were used to express or define the supreme powers at times, and that's where we are headed, right? Uh, right. yes. So I would say that the Sarvadarshi, Sarvasparshi, that the all were visible everywhere and touching every aspect of it is something which is happening with technology. And if we get this essence of what it means, I think it also articulates the challenges and opportunities which we have in front of us. Right. 
it's it's not separable from anything what you have it is part of everything what you do uh vaidhi mentioned about every strategic conversation starts with technology yes it starts with technology but the, today the things which have come in is that every transactions also start with technology discussion you know so that's where the you know it's not only something which is strategic which will make a difference which will a strategic differentiator but it is everything which is there and i think the challenge and opportunity both at the same time is for the businesses to reinvent themselves that how they position themselves as a technology oriented business or rather technology driven business keeping the core intact right i think that's the biggest opportunity and challenge at the same time very well uh, uh, you know said uh, uh, amul you know so yes sarva darshi sarva sparshi I, i guess you know i i, I will use it some some other at some other place for sure and you touch upon the opportunities yes there are a lot of opportunities that have uh, uh, emerged from this crisis but unless you know we are able to seize or capitalize on them i am sure these opportunities would be wasted uh, manoj uh, your views you know do we stick by the old playbook uh, what are you finding more exciting in these changing times all right so basically i would like to highlight a little bit bigger picture what is happening in last couple of years and where we we are going so uh, is not only technology piece trying a uh, kind of environment we have created around us which is uh, every we talk about a digital transformation right so the start journey with the innovation digital transformation and we can see where we are in terms of uh, you know development in terms of mindset people so uh, i can say undoubtedly future is a uh, Digital, complete digital. Today we are living in an environment of digital uh, world, and uh, you can see the next generation going to be a leap in the digital world, or come uh, completely in a virtual world. I can say is a metaverse kind of environment they have to create. And once we have metas, uh, metaverse kind of environment, so let's see. Today we are talking about uh, virtual discussion about any subject. Tomorrow will be, no wonder we can attend the. virtual wedding a virtual party and we keep paying the digital currency cryptocurrency or what not so we are what we are trying to say uh, we are moving entire digital form entire digital world so that is a no doubt about that now culture change come to the second topic culture change what happened today if you see the new generation is already ready to already change the culture now challenge here is people around us we have to train them we have to before technology we have to explain what exactly benefit of the culture a new culture so culture is a evolving factor as as soon as technologies grow and environment change culture automatically adopted most important thing is as said uh, whether that's right we said it technology is enable but today today we talking about entire business and entire business is a, not only technology enabled is a innovation has emerged as a core expectation from the it organization each of the brands in this discussion again are passionate about their customers for example unilever is one of the world's largest consumer packaged goods companies uh, whether it's a sumptuous soup or an energy saving uh, laundry detergent every unilever brand has a purpose from advocating nut- nutritious cooking to tackling uh, climate change very how are you jump starting innovation and pushing for new approaches to meet the opportunities and challenges of a business landscape forever changed um look interesting piece here is uh, you know it's not like like what uh, manoj was saying it's not a single uh, team's responsibility now uh, the business has understood that it's uh, it's innovation is need of the hour and uh, readiness to be uh, market ready is important uh, the other thing is also that every consumer or customer that has started judging the uh, you know the companies by its digital readiness and uh, you know uh, re- digital reach that's there as well right uh, having said that uh, you know at least from our perspective what we are doing is uh, we've started uh, setting aside uh, in creating core teams and uh, you know all this for focusing on innovation specifically right um, it's not you know a, a part of you know a, a side business that runs uh, anymore uh, right. there's a core team uh, best of the teams that have been put in uh, to actually you know drive innovation you know land capabilities um, it's 
everyone is aware right uh, not every innovation would work the way we, we would want but uh, even if you look at uh, three out of five innovations working right the the kind of benefit that it brings in is super huge right uh, the the kind of turn that it brings into the the business or probably the edge that you give, it gives you in the industry is it's uh, it's very very high from a business valuation perspective right so um, people are ready to put that effort time money and the key resources in uh, looking at new innovations and not just running the uh, the assets business as usual uh, you know a uh, uh, mode at this point of time that's the first thing uh, if you look at it uh the second most thing is also like what we were talking about culture uh every market or every um uh, company is ready to probably uh, look at uh, you know how to probably uh, you know fail or learn fast fast fail fast and learn fast so uh, the the culture and the readiness to actually get there has also changed from the market or the uh, company perspective so um you know the the readiness to put in effort money and time plus the readiness to uh, you know uh, fail and learn has actually changed quite a bit uh, in the industry to uh, from the acceptance of technology and innovation but just a question here uh, when you know when you when you speak of the core team that you've uh, created for innovation these these are cross functional right across business units across Or, in, uh, as, across yes so for example uh, you know let me take an example in um, in unilever we have a, a a center of excellence team for just for sales innovations we have a center of excellence team for supply chain innovations uh, the you know innovation that actually uh, is created all these teams um, you know are part of both technology and the business and not necessarily only from a technology and um, you know it it also helps you take decisions right there right uh uh right then and you know landed quickly so that's the way you know it helps and uh this is this was something that was working uh in some markets in unilever but uh, everyone is ready to do it and bring it together as a and what happens is all this is brought together by you know the the business heads uh um, right. you know bring bring the sales supply chain uh marketing or the consumer uh center of excellence together and probably have once in a month kind of a connect uh, even with the md of each of the market actually helps a lot so that's something that uh, we you know in many markets in unilever they found this to be super um, useful um, over the last year year and a half at least absolutely and if it's successful in some location you know it always makes sense to adapt Correct. those things locally as well <laughs> Amol, uh, the Mahindra Group again has an operational presence in over hundred countries and employs more than two lakh uh, people. You know, how do you view innovation as the lifeblood for growth? Uh, uh, see, completely agree with what Vaidhi said. Right? It's 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 not something which you do separately. It's a part of your everyday activities. You know, uh, and innovation. Uh, yes there are cross functional teams they are happening there are focus groups which are working you know in every aspect of it uh, see we are into uh, many of the product businesses right it's up like the consumer goods versus the products what we deal into uh, right. the I, i would just go to few months back into all our lives when the pandemic hit right when the businesses had to continue uh, to the new normal to the new scenarios which are there and that calls for a huge amount of innovation at a very short span of time very very short span of time right so uh, we are in a business where uh, the physical connect with customers is very very important right you cannot take it away and when the pandemic takes away that very essential aspect of uh, one of the core elements of the business you need to quickly innovate that how do you reach how do you you know uh, come up with some kind of an alternatives which would work on to this a small example like what we are having this session um, probably two years back nobody expected that we would have this kind of virtual live sessions and those technologies were deployed to connect with our customers in rural india where they are not otherwise possible to access to reach out right you are giving product demonstrations over a digital medium that's nothing but an innovation you don't need something which is a very uh, big problem to solve right sending people to mars kind of a thing it has to happen at every single small yeah. aspect of your everyday life so innovation is uh, not a 
activity which you do on purpose i think innovation is a part of every activity which you do as a part of your job and that is what will differentiate the businesses uh, one key differentiation which i would like to share is uh, the agility in terms of expectations from business right earlier the technology leaders had to do a lot of selling of the technology why they mentioned to some of it that there is a element of technologists coming up with proof of concept making a business case and you know presenting and there was a lot of sales component of selling the idea was involved the times have changed there is a lot of pull it's a question of that how much you can respond to the pull in a very agile effective and uh, very successful way and of course without forgetting completely uh, to the you know a pull side there that you need to have a mindset a culture of accepting failures something will work something will not but what you learn what you get from it and how do you one point that i would like to mention here was uh, you know whatever people took for granted uh, pre covid is getting questioned and uh, while the innovation mantra of the pre covid era era was to disrupt competitors this is really not the moment to disrupt you know companies will require to undergo a fundamental change uh, in the manner uh, they create innovation and lead their organizations what are some of the changes that you all are seeing you know and uh, how are you practicing leadership and innovation from yeah so interesting way, way uh, you know uh, manoj had put it right uh, this is an uh, a favorite part for me uh, because over the last two years i've been harping about this for a bit uh, you know uh, the story of disruption starts well before the need is felt actually right it's not when it is needed uh, right. so if you really look at you know what ha- trying to dis- stuff then uh, you know faltered right uh, people who were ready uh, had something in their plan who had actually landed something and uh, you know they actually took this covid time as uh, you know a, a, a time where people were ready to adopt digitally right so they could actually move in much faster than people trying to disrupt at that point of time so the way i i look at it is it's not necessary that you build for something that is the need then but you build for something that's a need in the future that's the way you start thinking about it and that that's the biggest advantage that you have with technology right um, and from a leadership perspective it becomes important to you know uh, be uh, or be open to you know experiment new ideas that can come in right uh, and uh, invest uh, invest in them right uh, invest in the new ideas that come in from any any quarters uh, of the uh, company right uh for example only uh, we landed this entire um, you know plastic recycling machine uh, just before the pandemic uh, and it was one of the uh, you know thoughts or ideas that came in from a, a, a intern interaction that uh, our ceo had uh, in nhl right uh, it can come in from anywhere you don't really need to probably build a you know hackathon or a, a you know a ideation um you know bench for two days sit through think about things it can come in from anywhere any discussion and if the ability to take it invest on it and uh, support is what actually breeds the culture of new age thinking and that that becomes really really uh, important from that perspective from a technology perspective again um, you know i've told this uh, before as well uh, you know the entire technology shift has moved from decades to years you know to months now so every 6 f- months probably you see a new technology shift that is coming in so uh, from a technology perspective your ability to you know uh, build um, you know capabilities that are that can evolve plug and plug and play and more importantly change uh, easily without much of a you know cost or a change management impact then half of your work is done so that's the way i look at it overall right pedi i i guess i we have a question for you before i i uh, you know uh, seek amul's views so the, the question pedi is and i'll read that uh, what is your take on digital as an innovation concept will this work for manufacturing firms it would definitely 100% so not just manufacturing firms but even uh, if you are going to go uh, you know interact with your customers uh, retailers and even your end consumers uh every mark uh, every retailer or every fmcg company is now looking at a mode of you know a physical as well as a digital engagement right at the same time uh, you know building from a manufacturing perspective the ability to uh, digitally innovate at the same time uh, bring that physical um, closeness 
to that innovation is what becomes important right and uh, uh, that's become an important uh, criteria even in unilever uh, every uh, every area where we are looking at we are probably looking at what we call as you know uh, integrated contact strategy pretty much a digital phys- uh, kind of a, you know way to connect with um, you know customers consumers or even from a manufacturing perspective so that's the way we uh, look at uh, how it drives and and it definitely helps yes amol yeah, so a uh, very interesting thoughts from manoj and vedi here uh, just some reflections from my side you know uh, you cannot serve uh, start to innovate when there is a need right where they mentioned something about it uh, see a couple of points which are there you need to constantly explore one major shift which i find is earlier there used to be a very uh, you know structured view a very compartmentalized view that if i am into this business these are the technologies i look at rest probably most of the thing what is on the table and what is off the table there were very clear boundaries you know uh, now everything is on the table there is hardly anything which is off the table uh, and it's important that you never know uh, what you will need and what will work for you Uh, manoj talked about the ideas coming from anywhere the innovation happening at every aspect of it said uh, where he mentioned but how do you keep your readiness to respond to a situation in a very critical one right let let me give an example and uh, where he talked about some of these uh, elements which is about physical and a very interesting question see uh, augmented reality virtual reality had a very sharp curve of you know appreciation and adoption and attraction across the businesses when it came to production all of it right. uh, the technology was widely used in terms of uh, presenting products or experience elements right product is all about experiences today there is nobody selling a product everybody is selling an experience whether it is a e-commerce company or a technology company like is my trip kind of a thing which manoj is uh, representing or a fmcg company like unilever or a product core product company or suv a tractor company farm equipment company like mahindra it's everything is about experiences we are not buying things uh, without an element of experience so these technologies ar vr offered a very interesting engagement element when it came to these experiences and suddenly look what pandemic did they immediately became the call uh, the way that you know um, if you can say untouchables in literal sense right because of the pandemic and what it senses it brought in now do businesses who have invested into it take it away do we throw it away? no we don't throw it away those learnings need to be deployed to see where we can use it especially in terms of manufacturing context right can it be deployed very quickly and we found many such examples where we could deploy it into training people in hazardous conditions where you cannot really put people into a hazardous conditions but you still need to train them so that you get the necessary uh, output of your processes and necessary quality of your processes so those need to be done but for that you need to have that experience it cannot start with one use case i believe the technology needs to be seen understood in all aspects so that it can be applied to multiple use cases depending on the scenario you know very very practical uh, learning about it and yes there is a physical experience there was a question on to this so i would like to comment is that physical experience is everywhere uh, i see the interesting part is uh, we often miss out is about the integration of the two right uh, where they mentioned that they are creating the both worlds kind of an um, integration i would go a step beyond and i said that look you need to look at the processes in the new world you cannot have old processes you cannot have completely new processes both extremes fail you know you need a right balance and a mix of digital and physical things for these digital and physical handshake to happen and that orchestration to convert into a you know a good symphony what you need is a balance and writing and visiting your business processes technologies what you have at hand what kind of money and investments you are willing to do into it and what kind of a you know direction which your leadership uh, is setting into this particular aspect i think these are very very critical if you want to do it uh, a very well balanced there is a huge room uh, for you know uh, if you look at why innovations fail fail meaning they don't desire, get deliver what desired output is you will typically find that it has to do with that probably the processes are not 
thought through end to end in the new world and that's a very very key i think is a point which we all need to keep in mind when so that's that's absolutely essential as well you know most of you have touched upon the cross functional collaboration uh, you know very uh, highlighted it amol spoke about it manoj did mention about it so what according to you are some of the digital judgments or or a set of beliefs mindsets and behaviors that can effectively enable this cross functional alignment uh, within the business um see for in my mind uh, ashwini i would like to quote a everyday example right uh, i i would like to say it's like cooking it's like serving the food not one person not one aspect one department in a in a mass scale can deliver it it's an everybody's play right? right while you need a chef a person who is going to guide and deciding what needs to be cooked and what how it should taste and all that there are things which are coming from everywhere and in my mind uh, see as if you are in france they say that anybody can cook right that means great cook can come from anywhere uh, it need not uh, be coming from a particular trade or a vocation so this happens here also uh, it's everybody's aspect it's a everyday experience that i'll go back to what i said earlier today everybody understands technology we don't have to explain it to people right they come up with thing and it's a more of a reverse conversation with technology teams and technology leaders that why do you say it cannot happen for me? right as simple as that if a uh, uh, you know a very interesting one that if ola uber is travel tracking and sharing where is your live location why cannot have the same thing available into my elements of experience right because that is what people have experienced few years back you did not have business users talking about in in this language this language itself has shifted everybody has started speaking into the same language people have started doing it and there is a lot of acceptance and adoption both which is there you know at times it's a good pull uh, to have from the uh, business users to have from your uh, partner ecosystem and otherwise to make it working but yes that cft is critical right you you are it you cannot cook right like all the ingredients in any dish are important it's the same thing you need the various people with a specific roles who will contribute to the uh, overall experience because again i would say a good digital product delivery a good digital business model delivery is nothing less of a delivering an experience every import element no matter how small or big matters ready uh you know quite a few you know common thoughts there with amol right uh, say three simple things that i would want to put in is one uh, you know technology and innovation if it has to land right uh in any business it has to be owned by everyone in the business it can't be just one uh, team right uh, so owned by everyone uh, led by the leadership right that's the way it would work uh, the second part of it is i probably touched upon this in the previous uh, discussion as well there is never a, a time that is too early for innovation you know uh, any time you feel that you know you need to probably explore like what amol was saying it's it's the right time and uh, you know uh, you never know when you would probably use it but just make sure that you go there explore and uh, get your innovations tested so that becomes important right that's the second part and uh, third one um, you know like i said uh, the tech shifts uh, are not in decades anymore or years anymore it's in months so it's absolutely okay not to be perfect uh, you know it's absolutely okay to you know test yourself uh, with what uh, works take the learnings out of it and uh, just that from a technology perspective create an ecosystem or a landscape in such a way that you are uh, probably uh, you know ready to change evolve as and when the technology changes so that's the way it works so the way i've seen predominantly is day one decisions probably maybe only about 40% right when you look at uh, uh, you know uh, a business as usual mode when when we go to a business as usual mode so from what we think to where we are when we go to a business as usual mode it might be only 40% right you will go through that you know 60% change and it's absolutely okay to do that just that don't make it uh, you know uh, how do i say don't make it too difficult for the change so that's how i would put it across to so uh, right a closing question before we wind up this great interaction and again in no particular sequence any any one of you can take it first 
you know, I started off with the with the futuristic view, and you know, uh, the uh, considering more so in today's time, the inability to credibly forecast the future is a bit disappointing, and we have been doing that for many years, and the last two years have been a a bit of a disappointment. Will pretending to know uh, become the most dramatic mistake that organizations could make moving forward? Quickly, please. Uh, Very. Let's start with you. Okay. Yeah. So uh, politically, yes, because what happened? We are not uh, very much uh, open-minded. We can talk in the public forum or X Y Z. Yes, we uh, we keep uh, telling ourselves what we are and what we are, you know, delivering to the industry. To be honest, every CIO or CXO people have their own mindset and uh, and what they want to, uh, you know, give their society and what exactly they're happening. That is a big difference, number one. Number two, uh, uh, is a learning process. I would say I, I, I know everything is not possible. We have to learn uh, whatever the age factor. There are no, uh, you know, uh, time for learning or, uh, you know, understanding, oh, this is not my cup of tea. No, we have to learn from the other, uh, you know, point of view also, what they, they are trying to say. And uh, of course, um, level of hiding, what I don't know, we don't know, that's a matter of what kind of public forum we have, what amount of hiding, that's always there. Whatever we can uh, uh, tell about the truth ourselves, uh, that's a different story, but of course, uh, level of degree of hiding is all, everywhere, every organization. Right. So yes, I I, I could uh, uh, take that as you know, keep learning continuously. Don't don't think that you know everything yourself. Yes, Vedi. I I think it's a trick question, right? Uh, you you can never uh, you know. Yes, technology changes every now probably or max a year but at the same time for you to land the changes on ground it takes that six months to one year as well right, right. you can't go and say that you know every six months i'm going to keep landing this change as well so um, of course uh, you should be open about saying that you know this is not something that's going to probably uh, last a decade but at least uh, you know it's not something that um, you know i'm looking at uh, changing every few months or so Right. right. Um, what has happened with this is that, uh, you know, the entire, uh, the business case, the business value realization um, or the return on investments have moved from a, a five year horizon to probably a, a max a two year kind of a horizon now. And uh, it becomes important for us to see, you know, how do we, um, how do we uh, probably build or uh, design for that kind of a view? That's one. The second part of it, what also happens is, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, so many changes in innovation happening, uh, it's important to find a sweet spot. When I say sweet spot, sweet spot between two critical uh, areas. One, to know when to let go, when things are not working and not continue to spend on it. At the same time, give, uh, give enough time for the change to land and, uh, you know, bring really? that value realization. Right. Okay. So both... Both stick at the same level, right? How do you bring the sweet spot between the two is very, very important. And the reason why I'm I'm bringing that in here is because you know by the time you actually realize this, there is a new technology, and you already say that you know I might probably be well off, uh, you know, doing something different. It never works that way, right? Uh, you know, so how do you bring all this? Uh, you know, three factors together. You know, the the rapidly changing technology in, uh, environment the readiness to land these changes and also, you know, build a, a, a business value realization period over which you want to land these changes is something that becomes important. Um, all, all this makes it even more difficult for us to probably, you know, uh, put our, put our hands on. Some, you know, uh, it, you can't necessarily take uh, what's going to happen probably six months down the line or a year down the line. Uh, but uh, what you can probably uh, predict is stick to uh, some parts of your, uh, you know, value realization, put a structured value, uh, structured pro uh, uh, process in to land the value realization and uh, ability to probably, you know, um, swing 
uh, based on any big disruptions that are coming in is, is something that's going to be uh, important. So that's the way I look at it overall. Absolutely. You know, so some of the very crucial points that you touched upon, you know, so, you know, in a way you should look at, at innovation, uh, uh, you know, to connect the digital dots also in a structured manner across the company's value chain with, with innovation at the core and get the right mix uh, where necessary. Amol. Yeah, see, uh, why they said it's a trick question, right? I, I would like to put it a little differently. If you take a look back and uh, see who is the Nostradamus in the tech space, right? Uh, so with all the humility, there is only number, nobody is there from technology space apart from the virtual whiskey brothers who wrote metrics many decades back. Okay. Uh, probably they had a fair view of what technology and future is going to be. Otherwise, we are all, and that gave a lot of ideation to people to innovate and whatnot. See, future is something which is, what is your definition of future? Is it tomorrow? Is it two weeks from now? Is it one month from now? Is it two years from now or what it is, right? That's that's the predictability scale which is there. And uh, um, irrespective of the duration, right? If we are able to, to put our affairs in order, in priority, over a period of next one year, by leveraging right. the right stack of technologies, by choosing the right priority areas with right business case scenarios, which are going to give you those returns where you are putting your effort in, developing it, putting into action and making sure it is used. I think that's a fair degree of future you can uh, foresee and predict. Right. Right. Anything beyond that is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a guess game, right? There, there is always be new technologies. There will be always something which will be new. There will be always some new hype about something. But you need to look at what will last and what will apply to your line of business, to your line of problems, to your line of requirements and the direction you want to do. Uh, purpose is very, very important. As long as you have a purpose in what you are doing or why you are doing it, then probably I think there is a fair amount of future gazing you are able to do. You may not know the scenarios uh, in the actual way what they are going to unfold in front of you, but you will have a fair idea of what you are going to deal with. So as long as you have your story aligned with purpose, with right uh, direction, uh, with right uh, ingredients which will realize help you realize these things whether it is through people whether it is through culture whether it is through innovation resources budgeting what all it takes as long as you have got it together i think there is a fair amount of confidence with which we can move in on a defined period of duration because beyond a particular point nobody knows what's mm -hmm. going to happen we, we didn't know that covid is going to come and we are going to change our lives upside down um, the same is a new normal and i think that's that's a very hands-on learning experience of a VUCA world. That's what I would say that if you have to see the ability to predict, VUCA is the only thing which you have a limited predictability for any business. Very well captured, Damol. Yes, you know, so stick to the core purpose, uh, select the right technologies, keep it simple and easy to adopt. That's how you address uh, the future. Right. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Amul, Manoj, and Vedi for sharing your views. I stand immensely inspired through this conversation, and I hope our viewers find the same. One key element that all of you have highlighted is that innovation is a mindset. Vedi did mention about embracing curiosity, brainstorming, and letting go of things that we already know. Uh, all the best for your respective initiatives. It was a pleasure interacting with all of you. That's all from this session. Thank you for watching, and take care. Thank you.